Hi, I'm Lee Teschler from Design World Magazine, and I'm here with Robert Bigler from Hoverboard Technologies. And Robert has developed a hoverboard. <laughs> it's actually a single-wheeled vehicle that you stand on and balance on. He's going to tell us a little bit about how it works. Robert, this yeah. is truly a unique <laughs> mode of transportation. Tell us a little bit about how it works, how it balances, and uh, how it moves. Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, so our hoverboard uh, has uh, batteries in the deck. They're kind of hidden there, uh, very flat. And so you don't really see them. Uh, it just has that big wheel in the middle. And that wheels, in the middle of that wheel is a very powerful servo motor, uh, direct drive servo motor. The hoverboard is programmed uh, to, to basically translate just minute tilting of the board into acceleration in, in that direction, or deceleration if you're you know, tilting back as you're moving. So, uh, and then with some various filters to bring stability to that whole inherently unstable scheme. <laughs> so the idea is that you'd be on a hoverboard and you would just kind of lean in the direction you want to accelerate and, and that whole principle then eventually falls back into your subconscious and you feel really uh, when you get to be uh, used to the hoverboard, uh, just like you're willing yourself in different directions and it's responding. It's interesting. It's a uh, DC servo motor that drives this. Is there anything special about that servo motor technology that uh, lets you put it in such a small, compact package that's ener that energy efficient? Uh, yeah, so typically a, a servo motor with as much power as this has, which is 5,000 watts of peak power, uh, would be a lot larger. What I, what I did is I invested in some large ring bearings that allow me to have the side of the, of the stator stationary and exposed to a large spiral heat sink there. So hmm. pushing the uh, axle out to the, to the ring bearings allowed me to have that hole in the middle that lets you <laughs> grab the hoverboard, but it also allowed me to basically epoxy that stator right to a heat sink and get the heat straight out of it, which allowed me to narrow the package and have you know, really several times more power in what is actually a smaller space than, than competitors. I notice it has a lithium battery technology, but it's not really the same lithium chemistries that are giving other hover hoverboards a bad name. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we use the uh, slightly more expensive, uh, uh, stable uh, LiPo chemistry. We also wrap it with very uh, contemporary uh, monitoring and balancing electronics. So. Uh, even though some would argue we don't really need to balance them very much, we, we still have those electronics in there to monitor the temperature of each individual cell and the voltage of each individual cell and make sure that they're always perfectly in alignment. Hmm. Well, even with uh, all that technology, I guess it takes a while to kind of get the hang of how to ride one of these. Oh, yeah. the, you were tooling around here earlier quite nicely. How long would you say it learn, takes to, uh, to learn to use one of these? Uh, it takes a, a couple hours a day for a week. No one's ever taken longer than that, even people with no skateboarding experience or surfing experience. And uh, when could people start to get their hands on production versions of these? Uh, that would be July. So we're Great. appointed right now. It uh, looks like we'll have the production versions in, in July. And uh, we have a, whole re a new round of prototypes coming out right now. And a, a lucky few of the people that have pre-ordered are going to get some of these prototypes, which we're excited about. Uh, but the uh, production ones off the production tooling we're expecting in July. That's awesome. Well, it's a, it's a fun thing, and uh, <laughs> it's quite unique technology. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>